Hello and welcome. As you can tell by the title, I'm the obsessed movie man, OMM. You know which director I don't hear a lot about anymore? George Roy Hill. Two of my favorite films of his are Thoroughly Modern Millie and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. But there's another film that he directed which is my personal favorite, and that would be The Sting. It tells of con man Johnny Hooker, who wants revenge for the death of his partner because they stole money from a man working for crime boss Doyle Lonigan. Wanting revenge, the unfortunately named Hooker locates his partner's old friend, Henry Gondorf, and they plan to set up a big con and take a boatload of money from Lonigan. There's twists and turns along the way, all accompanied by delightful ragtime music. I'm so happy that I went in blind to this film, because this type of movie works best when you have absolutely no idea what it's about. So let me explain the whole damn thing to you in this review. Okay, not the whole thing. The writer, David S. Ward, did a ton of research when developing the script, and it really shows. This is one of the smartest and most fun stories I've ever seen put to film. The lengths the film goes to in explaining how the cons work, while still making it investing to listen to, is excellent. I was never bored as to what was going on in every scene, and wanted to learn more about this world. There are a lot of twists to the film, showing just how elaborate the con can go, and the troubles that are bound to accompany it. I won't spoil any of them, but needless to say, I was fooled a lot of the time. With a film like this, you're going to need very vibrant and distinct characters, and this film gets that right. It's great seeing Robert Redford and Paul Newman working together in a film again, as they previously worked on Bush Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and they have fantastic chemistry together as always. Hooker is the young hotshot, and Gondorf is the burned-out mentor figure who wishes to impart his wisdom on his new protege. Inherently, this type of relationship isn't new, but the concept of teaching a con being the basis of the relationship, I think is. The best scene with the two is probably the introduction, where Hooker finds the drunk Gondorf and is initially skeptical of him. I like it because it almost feels like this, while not deliberately, is also a con. Hooker doesn't believe Gondorf can teach him anything, but like a con job, Gondorf is full of surprises, and Hooker slowly begins to realize there's more to him than meets the eye. And the two leads aren't the only interesting characters. There are a lot of side characters who are all very fun, and I'd love to learn about them. There's Kid Twist, Joe Erie, Billy, and many more. You feel that there's a lot of history to these people, and want to know their stories. But it doesn't stop there. We also have some cool villains. There's the corrupt Lieutenant Snyder, the wonderfully cliché mobsters, and Lonigan himself, who's played by Robert Shaw. Shaw gives so much intensity to his performance, even when he's remaining relatively calm. It's easy to see him thinking everything through, whether he's in the middle of a speech or staying quiet. The limp that he has in the film is a real limp. Shaw hurt himself before filming began, and instead of getting rid of him, George Roy Hill decided to keep Shaw and incorporate the limp into his character. One of the things that people take away from this movie is the music, which was done by Marvin Hamlish. First of all, there is practically no underscore present. Underscore is music that accompanies dialogue, so about 95% of the time when you hear music in the film, it's when nothing is being said, making its use limited, but also sticking in your mind more. The music used in the film is ragtime music, which was a popular form of music during the late 1800s to the early 1900s. The soundtrack included multiple compositions by Scott Joplin, a man who was named the King of Ragtime Writers. Some critics found fault with the music in the film, as ragtime did not take place in the 30s, while others greatly enjoyed the tunes. I'm among the latter and love the joyful and upbeat music. In some ways, it almost feels like a Looney Tunes type of music, as it has a whimsical antics type sense to it, which fits well with the story. And another reason why I love the music? It really does complete the feel of the film, which is that of an old-school Hollywood movie. It starts off with a black and white slash sepia color, we have the ragtime music, and there are title cards that introduce the cast and chapters in the film. It's such a brilliant idea! How much do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Oh, you're back! There's a pureness to The Sting and other George Roy Hill films that I don't see all too often.
I greatly admire the expertise he put into his works, and from the interviews I've seen from people who worked with him, they seem to share the same notions. The film won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Music, and Best Screenplay. It certainly deserves all those awards, and I'm happy to say that The Sting has entered my top 10 favorite films list. It's a movie that gets better and better with age, and it's a film where you always seem to notice something that you didn't see before. If you haven't already, make seeing The Sting a priority on your list. You follow? Thanks, this is an OMEM review. This is OMEM, signing out. Now where did that Audrey Hepburn Funko go?